Today's demonstration is going to be led by Dan Caprari, who is a senior solutions consultant here at Success Factors. Dan, please take it away. Thank you very much, Jesse. Uh, hello to everyone out there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Dan Caprari. I am from uh, SAP Success Factors, and today's session is on employee central payroll. So let's get started. Uh, when we talk about uh, SAP and payroll, we really have a lot of expertise and experience going almost 30 years in the HR and payroll space uh, in the U.S. We, globally, we have you know, over 7,000 customers running payroll on the same engine that is now in the cloud, uh, and 80 million people are paid through SAP's payroll system really a lot of expertise globally, locally. Uh, 71 countries are available for employee central and 28 countries uh, available for payroll and that is growing as we speak, uh, including 37 languages. So we really have a lot of experience in making sure that um, everything is secure and everything is compliant uh, legal, with legal and regulatory concerns. So employee central payroll really is is uh, changing the game. We know there are a lot of challenges in payroll, and not necessarily in processing payroll, but really uh, a lot of the reconciliation and uh, pre and post payroll auditing that payroll requires. And we've really uh, enabled this solution uh, with a lot of great tools to help people get through those processes much more efficiently and really speed the processes as you go through. And we'll see that today when we uh, access the application and go through the demo. And again, employee central payroll is, uh, is really comprehensive. It handles everything you could possibly uh, need to handle in payroll. Uh, we have master data that's maintained in the employee central uh, core HR system that's used to calculate gross pay based on uh, any pay types and time types entered and then do gross to net calculation where we can actually produce paychecks in our application. It handles retroactive pay, garnishments, we can do direct deposit, uh, handle taxes, quarterly reports, everything uh, you could really ask for in any country that we support, which is obviously a very large amount. Um, but to talk about the actual solution and how we process payroll, let's just step through a little process flow. Uh, like I said, everything starts with Employee Central. That's our core system of record for human resources data. It's got all of your employee data, pay data, those garnishments we talked about, and any payments and deductions. And we also um, now can process our own uh, time management data, but we also partner with other uh, groups. So if you have time solutions that you're already using, we can integrate with them. We have a lot of prepackaged solutions to integrate time and or benefits data into the, to the um, solution that can then uh, be used to calculate pay. Um, we calculate that gross to net, and then we have all of the data you might need to post to uh, financial applications um, and automated uh, programs to do that, as well as, like we said, we can do uh, electronic funds transfer, uh, we can print checks directly, or we can send some of that data to outsourced partners that you may want to interact with. All that information is retained in a history so that you can then use that for analytics that we provide um, for those pay statements, or again, all of that information could be uh, sent to other providers. Uh, so we really give you a lot of choice uh, when we pro you know, provide this uh, solution to you. So I don't want to bore you with a lot of PowerPoints. I don't like to do that. So how about we jump into a demo of the solution? I'm going to launch. Uh, into this. Give me a second to decide. 
resize my screen so that you can see everything here. So what you're seeing right now is employees. Um, hang on, Dan. I'm sorry. Dan, yeah. you're going to need to hit. You're going to need to hit the little play button in oh. the lower right portion. Thank you very much. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and we're buffering. Give it four seconds. One, two, three, four. Got it. Perfect. We're okay. in there. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I'm supposed to be technical, so that was my my technical lesson from Jesse. Uh, uh, this that you're seeing right here is Employee Central. So this is the core HR system. It's a role-based system. So what you're looking at here is really the interface that would be used for an administrator, like an HR administrator or a payroll administrator. And really, it's a, like an administrator self-service, which we really didn't have in the past. Um, I've been in uh, payroll for 25 years. Uh, I've been with SAP for 16, and I started uh, out as a payroll consultant, HR and payroll consultant. I uh, did that for about 13 years before I started this role. And before that, I was 10 years with ADP's payroll service. So I'm all about payroll. I've been around it for a long time. And, um, you know, back when I was starting out, not only were HR systems very disconnected from the business, but payroll systems, uh, particularly, I remember having to go into, you know, the back room to do payroll with people um, because of, you know, fear of security and, you know, a lot of printed paperwork that was out um, and around the offices, and it would have to be in a locked back room. Uh, and we've come a long way since then. Now we really can do everything online in this um, very secured interface that allows for interaction with HR and payroll functions depending on your role. So we push out this, this uh, interface depending on what you're allowed to do. It uh, tells you what you can do. So we'll see as we go through the demo a couple of different roles. This is the HR payroll administrator. There's also employee roles. An employee wouldn't get the same functionality uh, pushed out to them, and, and also a manager. So you'll see a little bit about employee central itself as well as uh, payroll because they really work hand in hand. Um, a little overview of the screen, you can see that uh, – this HR administrator has particular processes pushed to them like alerts, things that are going to help them make sure payroll processes uh, properly. So you can see some workflows where information is updating that may affect payroll. So uh, an address could affect a paycheck. Um, what department they're in or global assignment can it affect how people are being paid. So they need to have these alerts front and center for them. Uh, there's also other administrative things. They can do configuration for the HR and payroll system right from their first screen. And then certainly some other things about processing payroll and what kind of errors um, may be presented for payroll, as well as the payroll application itself is right here. What I'd like to do is start out with looking at uh, some information that is particular to payroll uh, that's contained in the, the HR system. So there's a couple of ways to navigate around the system. One is a, a really smart search. So if I type in someone's name, my, it will search for that person, and then I can start taking action on that person um, right from here. So I'm going to go into Carla's file, and you can see I can go to a lot of different places where information is stored right out of the gate. Um, and as an administrator, I certainly have more access to uh, see other people's information or act on other people's information, uh, whereas you know myself as an employee or as a manager who wasn't in HR or payroll wouldn't really be able to do that. So that's some of the power of the core HR system that's going to enable payroll to be run. So here we see Carla's uh, employment information, and there's a lot of information here. And you can see uh, over on the left-hand side, just if we look at some of the job information, some of the things that are particular towards payroll. So we can see a salary grade, which is going to drive, um, obviously, how much they're paid, uh, some standard hours, where they fit as far as what kind of employment, um, if they're in salaried staff or hourly staff, and even a pay group, which is identifying the frequency of their payroll. So all these things are going to help drive the payroll processing um, 
further down the line. So it's really important that this core HR data is accurate um, so that payroll can then run. Uh, there's a lot of places where you can uh, – interact with information. Here's another place. We use that uh, quick search to do some interaction with her first. Now there's a, a take action button where we can go in and uh, perform actions around uh, a lot of payroll information. And these uh, menus can really be designed and configured for what you allow people to do. So somebody might only have, um, you know, five of these options. Someone else might have all of these. Some might uh, not really be able to make changes to data in here uh, if you don't want them to. So it's all based on role security and really how you as a company want things uh, configured. So if I go into manage recurring deductions, deductions are part of uh, what's going to drive payroll. Uh, this system is going to bring up an area where I can take action. And the first thing we see here is that we're going to choose a date for this to be effective. And that's really a powerful part of our payroll system. And HR system is effective dating. It drives things like retroactive calculations. So if I make a change to a deduction in the past, it, uh, the system is automatically going to know that, and when payroll runs, it's going to run back to a previous period. Now, that's, again, based on your uh, wishes and configuration as a business. So some, some uh, people do allow for retro to occur, some don't, and that's all, that's all dependent on how we configure the system, but the power is there. Effective dating can go backwards. Effective dating can go forwards. So if you want to make changes that are for the future, you don't have to keep them in a stack of paper on your desk like uh, used to happen in the past. You make the change today. You put the date in the future. Um, and it's going to take effect in the future. So the system is really powerful from that perspective. I'm not going to make this change. I want to uh, show you another uh, uh, place where we can make changes as well. If I choose change job and compensation information, the system's smart and asks me which kind of information am I changing. Um, here I want to change compensation information. That's really relevant for uh, payroll. And I'm presented with a screen. First of all, again, it asks me, when do I want this to take effect? It, every time it's asking me that because it wants to um, help me make the right decisions as I make my changes that are uh, relevant for payroll. And then there's a lot of information in here, uh, choices for me to make. Uh, are they salaried or hourly? Are, are they commissioned? These are all things that you can figure so that payroll will run uh, correctly. What pay group are they in? Are we changing them to another organization? And here you can see the power of the global nature of this system as well. Just even in this um, demonstration system, I have a number of different countries that are uh, enabled in here that we can handle uh, for HR and payroll processing. And then you can see some other things about pay, range penetration, uh, if that's important when you're making changes, and even their total salary. We can see even a graphic that's calculating where they are in their salary grade. So as an HR administrator or a comp administrator, payroll administrator, you can see things about the history of the pay and even where they sit in the comp ratio. Um, so, and that these things will change on the fly. If I change this person to 200,000, um, which would be nice, it's going to change the comp ratio on the fly so that I can see what's happening when I make the change. Now, it may not be my decision to make that, um, you know, look at comp ratio. That can be taken off there and only presented to people that um, it's relevant for. But it really is a nice feature, um, you know, at comp compensation time to make sure that things are, uh, you know, balancing to what the business's goals are. Um, and then there are also other things. Here we have base salary uh, that's here, but we can also add other pieces of compensation if someone has an additional um, allowance for a company car, for example, that's put in right here. Um, we can see a bonus that is already being paid, and we can configure any kinds of additional pay um, on different frequencies. So here's a couple of different types of bonuses, and they can be paid on different frequencies, or they can be one-time 
like we saw on that first um, item. So these are uh, regularly paid amounts. So if we have an annual amount that's regularly paid, it can be put right in here, and it's going to um, certainly affect payroll. So that's some of the uh, employment information. There are other uh, places that we affect payroll right from an employee's uh, core HR file. And uh, in the personal information area, we have some information that's particular for payroll. Um, here we can see uh, a lot of personal information. Um, I'll take note of this uh, flag. This is not just a nice flag saying this person's from the U.S., but it's actually driving a lot of information, both from an HR and a payroll perspective. The fact that they have that United States flag drives the fields under there, like what are we allowed to track in the United States. If this flag was um, from another country, Canada, they may um, they track other things like uh, – tribal information uh, and things like that that the, in the U.S. we wouldn't be allowed to track. So it tracks processes even around payroll. So it's going to track which taxes, et cetera, down the line are going to be um, used for this person. But another thing that we may want to um, change or have uh, interaction with is for payroll is direct deposit. So here we have our direct deposit information can be updated. Um, we can add accounts. Every time I put in a new account, it adds a line for an additional account, so it's a very smart system. It knows once I put in two accounts, I may want a third, so it opens that up, but it doesn't keep it open forever. If I don't have the account, then it just leaves the ones I'm using and gives me the availability of just adding one more. Um, these, again, are configurable items, checking your savings. We can split this into different amounts so that you have multiple accounts. Um, the, the system will be uh, smart in calculating what is going to um, where. So that's some of the personal employment information. I'm not going to save those changes. Um, but what else is important? Of course, payroll information. Um, payroll information includes a lot of the really nitty-gritty payroll information like taxes. So here we have a screen, and again, I'll reiterate, I'm an administrator in my role here, so I can see a lot of things and change a lot of things that uh, you know an employee wouldn't. And I'll show you the differences later. Um, but as I go into here, we have residence tax area, so uh, we're able to put in you know, whatever tax uh, types are applicable, and this is where SAP really has a lot of strength as well, is in the um, compliance and taxation. We have uh, people working for us in every country that we uh, provide HR and payroll in. In fact, we have over 200 people dedicated to making sure we're compliant um, in HR and payroll regulations. Um, and they're not, they're, they're not just uh, you know, studying the taxes. They're in each of these countries so that they're getting paid uh, by us in those countries. We have to make sure that um, you know, they're getting paid accurately from a tax perspective. So um, you know, that gives us the confidence that we're going to do that correctly for you, and it really can give you the peace of mind that um, we really have the knowledge. We have people in those countries, um, certainly people all over the United States that are um, validating this information so that um, we can make sure that we do this correctly. And you can see at the bottom there um, the tax authorities, California and federal. When we update this, we just put in the state of California. It assumes the federal. It's a smart system in that perspective as well. And then if we look at the work tax area, we could have, you know, uh, the system is built up to do things like reciprocity. So if we put in where you live and where you work, our system is going to know how to do that reciprocity as well. So it's going to know um, if you live in one state, work in another. I'm in Philadelphia. We have a lot of people that um, cross to New Jersey or Delaware and New York. So we um, do a lot of um, – calculations for making sure reciprocal agreements are taken into effect as well. Um, if I go back on some other of the uh, payroll information we update, 
um, things like garnishments. Uh, we have a very powerful uh, system for garnishments. Um, we build it so that it's flexible. We don't just give you uh, option, you know, the options. Here's what we do. We have everything from child support, federal levies, court ordered support, um, uh, every different kind of possible garnishment, and we build them out about 70 to 80 percent of the way so that they're flexible. Um, we put in all of the parameters, and then we can put them together to do the right thing, because we know that in garnishments, you know, the court can say um, just about anything and make it uh, uh, specific to whatever that case uh, Requires so um, we really give you the ability to be flexible with garnishments, and we really can do uh, anything you can put uh, in front of us. If there's a mathematical uh, relationship to it, we can do that, um, and we can follow the you know the priorities, uh, the right amounts, and you know end dates that are particular by the court, um, and all of that's automated, and including you know letters that have to go out, et cetera. Um, so that's the, kind of the administrator, administrative view of here. What I'd like to do um, is log in as an employee uh, so that we can see just a difference of um, what an employee might look like if they were uh, entering information. So if I log in as Carla, who we're, the administrator is acting on, we'll see a little bit different of a look um, and a little bit different uh, functionality that she can access as herself. So you'll notice right away in the front of the screen, she's a manager, she can access her team, uh, things like that. But if she's going to interact with um, her employee file, she can also go uh, this direction. We saw the smart uh, action search before. Here is an actually really menu-based functionality. And if she were to enter time, like I said, we have our own time uh, management component here. She can enter her time. It's going to look at um, some rules in the background to see how to allocate those hours. You can see um, some details on what the hours are and whether it's working time. We put defaults in here um, so that you don't have to do as much uh, clicking around, you know, so that it's fast for employees. Um, but we put in every possible time that you might want to configure. So if people are allowed to put in their own overtime, that's available. And even choose cost centers and other uh, financial objects that they might want to post time to. So um, it's all really in here. This is kind of a, a quick, simple form, but you can even see that on the fly it's calculating some overtime and premiums, um, which is really nice. Um, so that information goes to payroll too. Uh, other things are absences uh, that will also go into payroll. You can see here if we go into the time off area that we're immediately presented with some information about what uh, is allowed time for us, for PTO, for example. At the bottom, we can see some requests. So I have some pending requests for PTO. Um, I can even see my team's absence calendar, so I can compare if I have times that I want to take off. And then it's really cool drag and drop functionality. So if I want to take that week off, I just drag across. And when I dragged, um, that across, it's, it's opening up this window and it's defaulting what it thinks I'm taking. I'm probably taking PTO, that's my first choice, we default that. But if it's something else, I can choose that here. I can put in the start and end dates. Again, that can be future dated, um, like anything could be in here. And then um, that's going to pass to the payroll system so that we uh, pay or don't pay if they're, they're unpaid absences, that information um, directly in there. Um, I'm going to go log in to another employee just to give you another look um, at some functionality that uh, is particular to payroll. Um, Jane uh, is going to look a little different. She's an employee, not a manager. So her first screen in the core HR system is going to be a little different. Um, she even can access an online W-2 here. Uh, but let's take a look at her employee file and look at her payroll screen. So it's going to look even a little different. We have very um, 
much less information available to her because she's an employee, not an administrator. So she can update her federal withholding. Um, she can pay, see her pay statement. But then she can also access these forms, which are great. Um, our tax partner, BSI, provides this eForms factory that is intelligent. It sees what kind of taxes are in um, her file and gives uh, information about it. You see this nice red item. It says our profile includes partial addresses, so her taxes may not be complete, and she may want to. Um, she may need these forms be completed. This form is for the Pennsylvania Act 32, so it's automatically presented to her um, to complete because we need to, in Pennsylvania, fill out these local tax forms to confirm. Um, uh, our residency for Pennsylvania. Also out here are other forms that she, uh, she may need, like the I-9 form. So these forms are presented to employees based on um, whether the system thinks we need them. So very uh, intelligent processing um, from this perspective. So once we have all this information in here, we want to pay people, right? That's what we're here for. We want to pay. Um, we want to look at payroll. So it takes a lot of information to get uh, ready for payroll, but then we uh, want to run payroll. So here, um, this always reminds me of a customer I was implementing at a couple of years ago when I was still doing payroll consulting, and uh, my contact there, Mary, used to walk around with a you know a spiral notebook and a stack of papers every day because they had three payrolls always running over. Um, you know, they had a biweekly and a weekly and a, a semi-monthly. So every week they were doing payroll, sometimes twice a week doing payroll. So she had this notebook. She called it her payroll control book. Um, and it, uh, I thought it was funny when this payroll control center came out because it really was exactly what Mary was trying to achieve was organize her payrolls so she never forgot any of the steps. And then she walked around with a stack of papers, which were all her reconciliation reports that she'd bring home every night um, and go through and eyeball for any uh, anomalies. And this payroll control center is really the automated version of Mary's payroll control book and reconciliation um, reports. And it's all online, no longer paper, uh, requires paper. So here you can see a couple of payroll areas that are um, going to be processed currently. So it, it's calendar-based. It shows you which payroll areas are uh, available, and it shows you what, where they stand in the process. So you can see period 11 is partially through the process, and we put all the steps of payroll inside this tool so that it's kind of a self-guided payroll process. Um, you can see that this is partially through the process. We're at the point where we're um, already simulating a posting to general ledger. But if we go through the beginning, we have several steps. We have pre-payroll steps, the actual payroll run, then the post-payroll steps, generating a pay slip, doing the direct deposit. That's all available in this system, um, and all the way through to posting to a general ledger. Uh, so we have all these steps in the system, uh, and we run them right from here. We can group them together based on what your um, business uh, steps are. We can push some to other parts of the organization. If financial people did the posting uh, steps or someone else did the pay slips, but we organize it based on your functions. And if we start at the beginning, pre-payroll step, this is a really uh, great functionality. We didn't just reorganize and give you a nice user interface um, for processing, but we're giving more functionality in this new user interface. And this is where you would run um, the steps. You can see what's running. You can see the status as it runs through, and even the result. And this um, first pre-payroll uh, processing step is checking master data. You can see at the top here, we're pre preparing a master data verification. So this is an intelligent step. What it's doing is going out and checking the master data of the core HR system and telling us if it, if it sees anything that's going to cause errors in the payroll. Um, and you can look right here after you run this step, you're provided with this work list of information um, of things that might have occurred. So an employee doesn't have a bank account. Well, they're not going to get direct deposit. That's going to be a problem. 
And then things that are intelligent, we have duplicate earnings in certain areas that um, that doesn't it may or may not make sense. So did we put it in two areas and they're going to get paid twice? So we saw in the core HR system under compensation, we saw places where you could put base pay and then you could put other types of pay. When it sees uh, the same amount in several places, the system can check that. And this is all configurable, so it can be based on what happens in your organization, not just what happens anywhere. So if it's, again, I'll use the term, if there's a mathematical way to do it, this can do it. If there's any logic to it, it can do it, So, and if it's in the system. So there's a lot of things that it can check. You know, the employment percentage doesn't match in two areas. So we think that there's something off, that's something off. And then when we run the payroll, we're probably going to get errors. It's really great. So when you, this can run every day up to a payroll so that when payroll runs, it's going to be clean. You already had the opportunity to check these things. Um, when we go through the payroll steps, uh, we do the first thing is called open payroll control record. Basically, that's locking down the system so people can't make changes to payroll relevant HR data um, while the payroll's running. We don't want it to go halfway through the process and have a change, um, you know, as would be typical. Um, you know, especially when people are online and available to make changes. So it locks that down, gives them an error, and says payroll is running. Um, then you run payroll, verify payroll. And then here's another great um, step, this payroll verification. Once the actual calculation has occurred, we execute this step, and this does a lot of checks on actual gross and net um, payroll uh, calculations. So this is also going to come into this work list and look at um, gross and net uh, variances. Um, so it can look at the previous payroll period and see if there is a large difference. So if someone got paid $1,000 more this period than last period, that may be an issue. And these are all configurable so that you could direct it toward types of employees. So if salaried executives in a certain area may get um, big differences from pay to pay, you don't have to have this check check them, but you may want it to check um, a different type of grouping. You can do it on a percentage. You can do it on net. You can see a lot of different differences here. You can even see things like a negative deduction. So did that make sense to have a negative deduction? Um, and you can look in and see what's actually happening. So the system's set up to then um, workflow these to the people that maybe they work for or the HR uh, business partner who takes care of that organization. Um, so that they can act on it. So whoever's going to act on it, they can get this information. This tool will let you push it to them, or um, if the payroll area just handles it, it gives you details in here about who it is and what kind of information. You can really dig in and see why it thinks this is an anomaly. Um, and it can also look at things you know, such as uh, retro calculation, a, a retro calculation that's going to cause a large um, difference in pay. And these are the kind of things you can see as payroll is running, so you can correct it, and you wouldn't know this happened. It's not an, necessarily an error. It's just an odd uh, situation. So you, it may be a week later, a person brings you um, a copy of their direct deposit slip and says, I only got paid $10 last uh, pay. Why is that? Well, the, this can uh, cut off those things so that you can uh, tackle those uh, issues right away while you're in the payroll uh, period and really tackle them before ha people have to bring them to you. So that's really a huge power of this um, tool is this pre-payroll and post-payroll checks. And then, again, I said earlier, this is a, a full-service um, payroll engine, so we can prepare and print pay slips, uh, executing them right here, and you can see whether everything was um, uh, correctly printed or not. It'll give you statistics on that um, once you run it, but you can do this to run the program that would put these pay slips out uh, to the web as well, um, which we'll see um, later 
a, a pay slip that ends up in Employee Central so that employees can see it. We can run the direct deposit um, and send that information out to the bank. Um, and it also gives you places here. I always like it for the um, for the bank files. When you get a confirmation, um, you can put in a note in here as to uh, what the status was. They usually give you a confirmation code, um, and then you can edit in here to uh, be able to put in a code so that it's saved uh, for history as well. Um, and all the way, like I said. Uh, if you're posting to a general ledger, we can put that transaction in here. And really, any transaction that you want is right part of your regular payroll processing can go in here. Um, so some people run off-cycle payrolls as well. So we could put that in here if there's a if you're remitting payments to a third party, if you're sending the data to a, uh, someone else to print the checks, anything can be configured um, that's a function of the HR and payroll system can be put into this tool. Uh, so it's a really uh, powerful tool um, from that perspective. As well, um, we provide uh, tax reporter, um, so we can handle any off-cycle payments, any tax payments, any functionality printing um, tax reports as well. So that's um, in really the back-end administrative area. We can access things that really only a payroll or HR administrator is going to handle. So we can run simulations of payrolls in here to check um, you know, test situations with employees' pay. And this is the payroll engine that's behind that menu. Um, this is the uh, core SAP payroll that's always been used, uh, even on-premise, now in the cloud. So here we can uh, use uh, what we call variants to fill in data that's um, used over and over again, and then execute processes here. We really use this for one-off situations, so maybe running a payroll for one person to see what an effect of a tax change was, for example, um, or maybe if they had a new garnishment put in, or if um, we're a, we have to pay back some uh, some payments from a recent overpayment. Um, all of that can be done here uh, to check one-off situations. And when we execute this, this is running exactly what a full payroll would run. So everything from gross to net, it's doing the tax calculations, it's checking for time information for um, uh, vacation balances, things like that. And then here you can see the output of a payroll um, it includes all the earnings. This is a pay statement that uh, we designed for the system. You can design these in the system um, to display however you would want them to display. But you can see there's some uh, salary and then all of the different taxes, um, federal, New Jersey, unemployment. There's different health disabilities. So we handle all of that um, for you as far as calculating and knowing which taxes to pay. Again, peace of mind of knowing that we're compliant um, with those tax uh, entities. We know what we're in close contact with them all the time and using our uh, partnership with the BSI tax calculation engine that um, all is calculated effectively. And you can see even here, someone they have um, some health deductions as well as garnishment. And then we're printing also on here what we've accrued for vacation, sick, and uh, PTO, which uh, can also be accommodated in the core HR system. Um, so that's an a, a example of a paycheck. Um, we also can do you know, reconciliation reports. All kinds of reporting is in here, um, help you with configuring um, reports. But Tax Reporter is another um, thing that I think is really uh, un powerful from SAP. Um, we can produce any type of tax report uh, right here. You can see they're organized. Here's some examples of what we're producing in the U.S. Um, in 941, uh, we have um, W-2s, 1099s, um, all available in here. 
um, and we can run them right from here. I mean, I'm running it for one employee just for speed, but you'd run a whole tax company for a, a 941. It's produced right here in the proper format um, for the government. We keep these up to date. Um, you know, every time there's an adjustment, so you can see here, there's a 941. It's um, filled in based on the employee I put in here, but it would be run for an entire uh, tax company in a typical processing. Um, and all of that is right here. You can run a W-2 from here, um, any kind of data from here that is applicable for payroll and taxes is all available in a, you know, our end-to-end -end solution. And once we're done with all of these um, payrolls, if we look back at you know Jane's uh, payroll information. Really, the end result is what do we want? We want to pay. We want a paycheck. Everybody wants to get a paycheck. So Jane's paycheck is per, is provided out here for her so that she can see everything. You know, right when uh, the pay date occurs, and she can see again. Here's an example, similar uh, format of a pay statement. She can see everything. A summary of the pay up here, including the net um, and a check number, some holiday pay, some hours worked, and then taxes, you know, federal and California. And then it shows here where it's going, what, the, what um, direct deposit account it's going to, and what amount uh, and net. And then you can even put a, a notation at the bottom um, in the pay statement of, you know, notes to the company on things that are uh, – happening, so like they're starting a month of service. Um, you know, so everything is very configurable to your needs. Um, like I said, from start to end, and it's all contained in one place, an easy to use uh, interface. We go back to uh, the administrator's uh, home screen. Everything they want to do is initiated from this first screen, whether it's um, core HR, um, information relevant for payroll, or actually processing the payroll, and all of those uh, you know, tools can be accessed right from this home menu. So I think we're running up on uh, uh, 45 minutes. I think I'm going to end the, um, the demo portion and pop back out to um, the uh, PowerPoint to, to close things out. Dan, I've pushed the next slide live, so if you want to hit your square down there, and you'll rejoin us with the slide deck. Okay. I think I hit the square. <laughs> Let me close well, the that. audience All is right. definitely there an are. example on table <laughs> results. I couldn't find it. All right. Um, and again, I mentioned some reporting, but here's uh, an example of some of the reporting on payroll results. There's uh, flexible reporting in the system, uh, ad hoc reporting, as well as a lot of uh, canned reports to help you with reconciliations. Again, our new tool, the Payroll Control Center, really takes a lot of this paper reporting um, out of the way, but um, we know everybody needs to at least uh, see a summary of the payroll results and things like that. Um, but uh, So that's all available in here. It's always been available. Even uh, reconciliation reports are in there. Hopefully uh, people will like to take advantage of that new tool and kind of get reconciliation out of the out of the way as far as a reporting task and really ha make it an online task that's interactive with the payroll so that um, that's occurring while you're running payroll and it's not becoming uh, you know an additional chore um, and the payroll system is always evolving. This is something we're constantly upgrading. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we have 28 countries available for payroll. We have an enormous list on the right-hand side of this slide of what's coming. Um, all, all, all kinds of countries are on their way. We continue to enhance them. Every time I say the number of countries, like 28, um, by the next week someone gives me a new number. So we're really uh, enhancing all all of this um, functionality, uh, every, making the usability better, making it an easier to uh, operate uh, system all the time. It's always been a very uh, um, 
robust and sophisticated payroll system and engine, uh, and we're, we're continuing to keep that up to date while uh, making a user usability really a factor and uh, success factors. And employee central payroll really has become you know the next wave of the way to do payroll. So I will wrap it up there and go to um, Q and A if we have a question in the queue that we want to answer. Uh, uh, just a note yeah. out to the audience, we have an open queue for you. We've actually had some help along the way and have been answering questions throughout. So if anyone has any questions, please. Excellent. We've got our first one in here. Um, Dan, what is the difference between pay targets and pays? Pay targets and pays. Um, I'm not sure where that question comes from. Maybe they can be more specific. All right. Well, while we wait for perhaps that person to, to fill in some info there, what about um, how easy is ad hoc reporting? Oh, ad hoc reporting is really easy. Um, we provide all of the uh, fields that are available in the system um, and really drag and drop functionality allows you to you know pull fields uh, whether it's the fields that are uh, displayed on a report or what the criteria is so the selection criteria um, is really uh, simple so whether it's HR data or payroll data or both um, it's all very um, you know, it's current kind of functionality. It's drag and drop any uh, field or if it's payroll data, you know, based on whatever period that they'd like to see. Great. Well, here we got another question. How does the system handle the pay for an employee going from hourly to salary? Okay. Well, it depends on uh, uh, the particular situation, I mean, hourly to salary can occur um, very easily by changing. You know, we looked at in the system the pay groups and organizations, so everything's grouped uh, together based on what kind of person they are. So if you're hourly, it's automatically going to uh, default to whatever you've determined is the right type of pay to pay an hourly person. We refer to them as pay components or wage types. So it'll defer to the to the right type of um, rate. If you're going from hourly to salaried, um, it'll put you in a uh, a wage type or pay component that is just based on the pay period. So if it's semi-monthly or uh, biweekly or weekly, um, it automatically picks up those parameters from the type of employee you are. So it'll default things from knowing you're a salaried employee. Um, and then just converts it. Uh, the only um, you know intricacy of that is is when that occurs. Typically, you know, we, we try to make sure that we're, that's happening at the beginning of a pay period. If it's not, there are certainly adjustments that can be made to temporarily make them um, you know part way through the period into into a different type of person. Great, and we have several more questions coming in, including one that I can answer about a replay. Today's event has been recorded, and we will be posting this and sending it out to you within the next week. So you definitely get a copy of this in your email. Check out for it in about a week. Back to the other questions. Uh, do you configure SAP payroll through the same admin tools as success factors? Uh, well, it's accessed from those admin tools, but it is a different uh, configuration mechanism. So it, it is, uh, payroll is done in the uh, payroll user interface that where I showed running the simulations um, and, um, and where I showed the tax reporter functionality. It's a little different user interface. Everything is, is uh, launched from Employee Central where the admin tools are, but it's just a different menu path. Great. And the next question, if I understand correctly, BSI provides the tax rate, but success factors handles the tax deposits and the filing? Is that true? Um, well, ta the tax deposits and, and filings, um, ADP does, or SAP does not provide that service. We typically uh, suggest someone like an ADP, our partner, to do actual filings and deposits. 
and that actually is the next question is BSI a separate service that's paid for separately? I think. Um, it, it's part of the of the system. It is a separate service, but it's built into the costs for employee right. central payroll. Can you have different messages display on the paycheck based on the state where they work? Yes, you can. Yeah, based on any organizational um, uh, identifier in the in the system. Yeah, we can point messages to different folks. Yep. Great. Will the payroll control center allow you to incorporate an outside vendor like ADP print services into the work list? And how would that work with being allowed to view the check? Uh, no, there's two parts of that. Yes, the first part, <laughs> yes, we can put any transaction that we're um, doing in the system in that payroll control center. So we would initiate those those transfer programs to an ADP in from Employee Central Payroll. So yes, the, any transaction that's done from Employee Central Payroll can be put in that payroll control center. On the uh, checks from an ADP, they, we have a uh, you know a pre-built integration to and from ADP. So there's a program that would come back from SA, from ADP with the the a file of paychecks um, that would would have to be uploaded into the system. So that it can all be put in the payroll control center um, uh, because they are inherent in SAP that we have that uh, relationship and those programs already built. Great. Is the payroll processing done by traditional SAP payroll? So there's an interface in the background between the success factors and the legacy SAP systems. And is that interface, is it real time or is it batch? Um, can you say the first part again? <laughs> sure, sure. Sorry. Is the payroll yeah, no no. Is the payroll processing done by traditional SAP payroll? Okay. So yeah, it it's the same payroll engine that's traditionally um in the on premise SAP payroll. Um that but it's in the cloud and integrated with employee central um core HR. Uh most Items are real time. There are some that are done in batch, but those aren't the payroll related updates. So it's you know in, indicative information will go in a batch to at, to the payroll side. Um, but anything like I showed, updating residence tax and work tax and W four information, anything that's really particular to payroll is going to go uh, real time. The rest is what we call near real time. All right, we are getting into the lightning round with five minutes left and a queue that keeps on coming. We're going to try and get these <laughs> answers out to our audience. So, Dan, payroll configuration is on EC portal or is it done in SAP ECC on cloud? Uh, I will do lightning round answer, ECC on cloud. <laughs> Excellent. Can you give us an idea of how many companies, oh, excuse me, if we provide payroll as a service, can we combine the FEIN number into one payroll processing group and then split the detail and reporting out to separate GL accounts? Yes. Oh, there's a lightning round answer for you. <laughs> I've never heard one before in my life. Is EC payroll an integration of SAP on-premise payroll or is it an independent module? It's independent. It's not on prem. It's not you know in on-premise. Set up. It's uh, separated into its own uh, independent build of of the same engine. All right. Can I upload compensation information for group of employees? For example, can I pay all monthly frequency employees using pay information from a spreadsheet? Yeah, absolutely. There are updates, um, mass upload capabilities in. Um, uh, employee central that will load that information into employees' records and um, then we'll pay them. Yes. Great. Do you have a way to handle California sick pay to pull balances onto the pay statement? Uh, yes. We can put anything that we're um, processing onto the pay statement. Yes. Excellent. Great lightning round. We've got a few more to go. <laughs> 
Do you have other clients in Canada and Europe that's using this employee central payroll? If so, they would like you to mention some. I'm not sure if that's allowed. Uh, yeah, I don't even have a list in front of me. We do have um, customers. Um, if you if you keep that question, we we could probably uh, get the list out to these folks. Uh, you know, after the session. Oh, well, Jesse just informed me that she has dropped, her phone line has dropped from the conference. So I'm not sure if Can I you can... hear me, Dan? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'll ask, ask the next question. This is Butch, by the way. Does the customer need to purchase SAP payroll or on-premise system for EC payroll? No, not at all. It's completely independent of the on-premise um, system that can be purchased, you know, just as we're describing it, Employee Central, um, Core HR, and Payroll by itself in the cloud. Okay, no next from. question. For uh, FLSA calculations, do you support both rate in effect and weighted average along with union contracts? Uh, I mean, I'd like to dig into that a little deeper, but, you know, in, in – uh, General terms, yes, like we can handle regular rate of pay, calculations, et cetera, for FLSA. Okay, the next question. Uh, we use, I guess this is NetWeaver Enterprise for ESS and MSS. How can we use these services in success factors? Uh, ESS, MSS is also a part of employee central payroll, is it? Yeah, I mean, what you saw, um, the user interface employee central is really what we're calling the new face of ESS and MSS. So they're not separate programs. Um, you know, ESS and MSS, really, you go to ESS to do ESS functions. MSS, you go to MSS if you're a manager to do those functions. In employee central, you saw really three different roles, and automatically you get the functions inherent in those roles or whatever as a company you decide are the right functions. So an employee you saw only had, you know, uh, compared to the payroll administrator had very limited functionality. They could do all kinds of things with their employee data and anything that you allow them to do is available to interact with their personal data or uh, updating information for, you know, anything they're allowed. You know, we don't want them updating their salary information. But then right. there's manager um, who can interact with their employees' information. So they could give their employee a, a spot bonus if that's allowed um, and see information on them, including, you know, uh, information around talent or if we do or if we're doing other things with employees central or success factors um, okay talent, last, uh, last last two questions really okay quick. <laughs> do we use the SAP payroll schemas as in the old days or or success factors or has success factors developed their own schemas no, we, we, yes, we're using SAP payroll schemas. They're tried and true. We know those work, so we put that in the cloud. We didn't want to rebuild something that's very sophisticated and works very well. So. Okay, last question. Can I add a new wage type as an administrator? Yes, yes, you can. Um, I didn't show that because we were uh, getting close to the end of time. But yeah, as a payroll administrator, you can add a, you know, in the employee central side, they're called pay components, um, and they're mapped to wage types on the payroll side, and both of those are available to administrators. Okay, and I think that clears the list of Q and A questions.